Mike, you, you did a, a lot of pioneering work. At the time, it seemed uh, like a bit of a wacky idea, but in Atlas and Atlas II, you added on an anticoagulant to antiplatelet therapy, different context, mm -hmm. patients coming in with an acute coronary syndrome, but there the idea of long-term uh, low dose, uh, in that case, or very low dose anticoagulant, made a dramatic difference, lowering the rate of mortality, significantly lowering mortality. So it does sort of open that door to the patients that are at risk of thrombotic disorders, in that case on the arterial side, benefited with long-term, uh, albeit uh, low-dose, anticoagulation. Do you think there's any lessons we can learn from that? And then the subsequent COMPASS trial, which in a non-ACS stable CAD and PAD population found that that same dose, in that case rivaroxaban, 2.5 milligrams twice a day, once more reduced mortality. Is there a yeah. lesson that we can learn there big that lessons, we can apply here? Big lessons. I think we came off a couple of decades of what I called the platelet decades, and there was a tremendous amount of education that went into to teaching people about platelet activation and the angry platelet. Platelets calm down after an ACS event, and they get less and less activated. You need lower and lower doses, like of, say, Ticagalor. Mm -hmm. What we also are learning, though, is that thrombin generation doesn't really go down. And it's that persistent, elevated thrombin generation that puts you at risk for those late events. Mm -hmm. So platelets calm down, but thrombin may be a little bit like the new cholesterol. You know, it's persistently elevated. It may be a chronic risk factor. And I think people were just, they couldn't believe it that, right. you know, inhibiting th thrombin generation would reduce events because they thought this was all a platelet disease. Even stent thrombosis, which we thought was a platelet yeah. disease, was reduced by 31% right. by targeting thrombin. The other thing people don't realize is these antiplatelets, they don't block activation of your platelets by thrombin. Right, which is the, the most, most potent. potent yeah. standard. Yeah. So we've got yeah. a big very gap potent. in care there. Right. It's just fascinating that people you know, get very embedded in paradigms and they just can't accept a new paradigm. And I think two studies, 45,000 patients worth of data, independently showing reductions in mortality, you would hope it would change the <laughs> paradigm, but we're slow learners. Well, I think part of the problem, we may be slow learners, but I think part of the problem is what Gary said too, is that uh, warfarin sort of poisoned the well. You know, the early studies of stent thrombosis, warfarin didn't look that good, lots of bleeding, not that effective, and even aspirin plus ticlopidine, not the best version of dual antiplatelet therapy, yeah. beat it. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, likewise, studies of extended duration warfarin after MI, yeah, there were positive signals there, uh, but, you know, lots of bleeding. So it, it really colored the way the field moved forward. And maybe this Alex. mechanism of, of the, this low-level kind of thrombin-based mediated process of, of kind of, it's an inflammatory process, it's, 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 a, it's a pleiotropic process, but, but what's fascinating to me is as low doses of batrixaban reduce stroke and TIA by 45% or so, low doses of rivaroxaban now, that was actually a pre-specified <laughs> secondary uh, endpoint looking at fatal and irreversible va you know, vascular events in, in Mariner, and we saw a 28% significant reduction uh, with these mostly arterial side events. So this, this paradigm, Mike, that you discussed is, is really important because we, we get so fixated within our own fields, we don't realize there's a real Boolean relationship uh, between arterial and venous disease. And, and I'm bringing in Boolean algebra now. This wow. is a pretty high-level conversation. I can't spell that, but <laughs> it's a great concept. But, you know, we do know on the ACS side, STEMI, non-STEMI, ACS, they have elevated levels of thrombin generation chronically compared to the stable patient. What we probably need to do is look at the medically yeah. ill patient. Absolutely. I suspect. I suspect that they tend to have a higher rheostat or set point of thrombin generation as well. They have bad blood as well, I bet. Yeah, something led to their increased yeah. risk in the first place.